Boston Bruins Hockey on Nesson is brought to you by Subaru of New England, by Ace Ticket, by Toyota's official website for deals, by a Toyota.com, by Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin', by your New England Ford dealers, and by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And the crowd rises. You can tell who has snow tires. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the It's impressive, about 11,000 in the stands and more coming in as we get set to go. Tonight's starting goalies brought to you by your local New England Audi dealers. Experience Audi Quattro all-wheel drive tonight. It's Marek Mazanitz, like Thomas Placanitz in his last 10 games. Not good numbers. First National Hockey League game for Nicholas Spedberg. Who was good in Providence this season, really good in training camp, and great in the AHL last year with a 37 win season. Flo Julian's Bruins have lost two in a row. They haven't dropped three in a row since the end of last season. Barry Trotz, the only coach Nashville's ever had. The game is on. Brick tonight. It's mostly about that blue-collar ethic of the Bruins. Yeah, it's about uh, their compete factor and making sure they win the majority of the battles in all the dirty areas and also puck management. That's one thing Claude Julian talked about this morning. The game that they beat Nashville in Nashville, 6-2, their ability to control the puck, move the puck, and make plays was clearly evident that night. David Krejci up the boards for Jerome McGinley, but Craig Smith picks it off. Krejci wheels the puck out into the neutral zone. Roman Yossi ahead to David Leguan, and Leguan spins it down to Spedberg's left. Barkowski looks in front of the goal and sees the talented Patrick Hornquist, the, sh the front man on the forecheck. Patrice Bergeron making himself available, and the pass goes all the way past Riley Smith. Mazanitz into the corner. Now the puck comes near side. Dougie Hamilton gets his first touch in a few weeks. Battling after the puck against Eckholm. Matthias Eckholm spins Bergeron right on him, and then in comes Smith to disrupt the flow. Chara cross ice. Colin Wilson picks it off. Wilson is on a hot streak. Drops it off to Mike Fisher. The shot deflects and a save by Spedberg. Dougie Hamilton risks the puck softly up the boards for Smith. The short pass to Bergeron, making him himself available on the eight feet away. Bergeron pulls up on the half boards, throws it right through the middle, and he had both of his linemates, Marchand and Smith. And that's one of those passes where it doesn't have to be tape to tape. You know you have double barrel action on the net drive. Just get it in the area of the blue paint. McQuaid's pass into Spooner's skates. Back come the Preds, three on three. Gabriel Bork, but... Fraser knocks it away. Carl Soderberg flips the backhand off the corner board. Mazzetti snaps it along. Victor Stahlberg, University of Vermont product, can't clear the zone. Ryan Ellis, who will turn 23 tomorrow, wearing number four in white, can't get it out of the zone. Kevin Klein up ahead. 
Spedberg bumps it off the corner boards. Krug bangs Cullen, and McQuaid takes the puck. Long indirect, looking for Soderberg at the attack line, but Klein takes it away. And there's Ellis, wristing it off the glass and in. Fresh set of legs out there for Nashville. Paul Gostad tries to cave in Krug, but he maintains position. Now, Nystrom off the skate of the referee and all the way back through the neutral zone. If you watched the game a couple of days before Christmas, you saw 24 and white. Eric Nystrom hit Adam McQuaid about as hard as McQuaid's ever taken a punch. <laughs> Here's Pye trying to turn inside, and I don't know why, but he's going to send Seth Jones to the box. Campbell spins the pass middle. Jones had position. Pye lost an edge, but Jones is going to go for holding. Yeah, he yes. had that free hand out, trying to get position on Pye. Pye with the good speed. I'll tell you, at first blush, certainly didn't look like a penalty. Pye is trying to do the job. He just loses an edge, and Jones doesn't do anything. But the Bruins get the benefit of the call. Jones in the box. The Bruins with an early power play. Bruins power play brought to you by McDonald's. The Bruins, three of their last three when going into the power play tie, including Jerome McGinley with a go-ahead goal on the 23rd of December in Nashville. David Krejci knocks the puck down on the line. Lucic tries to gun it across ice. Shea Weber shuts down his space. Krejci off the boards looking for McGinley. Good read by Yossi. Gets it up to the line. Not out. The drive from Krug with a puck on edge and it fires wide of the goal. Krug snaps it to Krejci. Down low to McGinley. The right shot on the left side. Pass looking for Chara. Krug rescues it off the stick of Spalling. Lucic turns, jams, saved by Mazanitz. Now it's Krejci holding on the wall. Taps to Chara. Chara closes all the way to the dot. The shot. And he couldn't get it under the bar. Krejci knocks down the puck before it gets to center ice. Here's Aguila working on Yossi. Down low for Lucic to give and go. It's off a stick right through the goal mouth. Chara picks it up, brings it back to Krug. Krejci's one-timer and a blocker save by Mazanitz, who catches with the right hand and blocks with the left. Aguila slips it to Lucic through Chara all the way back to Krug. Tremendous zone time and chances for the Bruins on this power play. Lucic spins it across the goal mouth. Krejci takes it on the carom with Aguila rotating back to the point. Krejci holds it against Weber. Goes right to the post. Jams it. It's underneath. Chara can't pry it loose. And Mazanitz makes the save. Nashville trying to be as aggressive as they can with the Bruins moving the puck with confidence and quickly. And when you try to be aggressive from time to time, it opens up that low play short side. It started with Lucic on one side. The low shot nearly led to a second chance opportunity for himself. David Krejci's going to do the same thing. Bruins had some good opportunities in and around the net. They had a couple of point shots through traffic. Moving the puck well at the main advantage. Hamilton slips it to Smith. He closes, looking for Bergeron's tip in the high slot. Spooner to Bergeron at the dot. Spooner tosses to Soderberg, back to Bergeron. Bergeron keeps the puck in the attacking zone with a steal from Gostad. Now here's Soderberg against Eckholm. The puck deflects back to Hamilton. He loads up and hits Bergeron in the skate. Bounces around the slot. And finally, Hendricks smacks it 200 feet. Again, the low play there. Soderberg trying to take the puck to net. Thought he had an option towards Bergeron in the slot. Could have taken the shot himself. And of course, the threat back door to Riley Smith. The play we've seen a lot from that group. Final five seconds to the power play. Shea Weber with the check on Jerome. This will be icing against Nashville. No, they say he got rid of it before the man exited the box. Four shots during the power play for the Bruins. Bartkowski up the pie. It's off his stick. Klein pops the puck into the benches, and the faceoff will be in the neutral zone. Well, the rhythm derived from the power play often can spark an offense, and the Bruins certainly had the rhythm there. Yeah, which means this shift is probably pretty important to both clubs. The Bruins want to keep the momentum that they established with the man advantage. They want more offensive zone time. They want the next shot on goal. You're looking for the Campbell line to keep that momentum going in the direction you need it to be going. A minute and 47 seconds out of two minutes on the power play spent with the puck in the attacking zone for the Bruins. Campbell tries to angle off Stahlberg. 
Knocks it back to center. Here's Paye maneuvering in traffic. Campbell finds a seam. Now Caron off the skates. Back to Boychuk. The wrist shot blocked before it gets all the way through to Mazan. Ellis gets tripped up along the end boards. No goal. Paye skating straight to the box. Leg check by Paye. They're going to call it a trip. Paye started this play in the neutral zone, winning a battle against uh, Klein right at the red line. He didn't panic. A little backhand feed to Campbell. Campbell only was a walk in. He slid a pass across. Looking for Caron for a one timer. Caron's trying to keep that four checking pressure. Paye trying to get body contact on Ellis, but it's that right skate, right leg that sends him to the penalty box for a trip. Caron had a chance for a backhand goal, but that's not going to count. So in Asheville on the power play, Adam McQuaid backhands it the length of the ice. Asheville one for five in a win against Detroit on Monday. Ten power play goals for the Preds in their last nine games. So they've been finding the rhythm. How about that clear by McQuaid? From behind the net on his backhand, off the glass and out. That's pretty good. Makes you hold your breath for a moment with ah, the automatic play penalty. Come Here's Marshan leading the league in shorthanded goals. Wanted to dish to Bergeron, maybe a little too unselfish. Marshan's shot, glove saved by Mazanitz, and he spills it out. Now, he never created the passing lane. They were too linear. That was an easy play to defend. Got to start thinking shot on that two-on-one on the shorthanded situation. Mike Fisher spoons the puck for Yost. He gets it back in his skates and pulls it off the boards. To Shea Weber, who has the second hardest shot ever recorded. Only to Zdeno Chara's 108.8. Yossi's drive goes into the gut on Svedberg. And the crowd responding to the Bruins goalie in his first NHL game. Yeah, good shot. Good save, I should say, on a shot that uh, it's right at him. But he needs to be square to the shot. He knows he's got a little traffic he's got to deal with. Not only does he make the same square to the shot, Jack, he's able to smother it, not let that puck drop down for a potential rebound with Holmquist standing right there. A lot of depth in Providence. Five men have made their Bruins debuts this season. Matt Cullen, a terrific guy on the draw in his 16th NHL season with Colin Wilson. He's on a scoring streak, as is Mike Fisher. Craig Smith, right shot on the left side. Towards man. Ellis to Seth Jones, the very bright rookie. Here is Jones. Barry Trot says some nights he plays like he's 29. Other nights, yeah, he's 19. <laughs> <laughs> fires it around. Colin Wilson, the diagonal to Ellis on edge. The drive goes up and into the body of Johnny Boychuk. Marshan holds it and wrists it in on Mazan. Boychuk with a big hit. And then he got right back into the shooting lane and blocked the shot. Here's Jones. Off the boards for Craig Smith. McQuay sends the backhand around and rattles through the skates of Jones. Cullen out at the point. Back pedals, gets away from Caron. Taps it off the corner boards and Chara takes the puck away from Wilson. Can't clear past Ellis. Jones back to Ellis. Ellis over to Smith. The drive off the iron and... Off the post, it comes into the seventh row of the stands over here on the side. Craig Smith has really quick feet. Uses his attributes well. And a real good shot, too. Tops of the circle. His body language is selling it as if he's going to go far side. But the change of the stick and the blade and the position of the hands, he's going to rip it short side high. And uh, he had Spedberg beat, but it caught that post cross by combination. And Ended up going out of play on the other side of the ice. He shot it so high. Roman Yossi's drive blocked down. One shot on goal during the power play. The shot that hit the post is not counted as a shot on goal. Boychuk takes a huge hit in front of the penalty bench doors from Matt Hendricks, who dishes out huge hits. He and Boychuk, of course, once traded for one another. Hendricks fires it. Goal word, and Spedberg gets a glove on it in some big track. Weber tips the puck loose. Hendricks controls the dart over to Yossi through the glove of Boychuk. Wobbles in towards Spedberg. Nashville gets fresh legs on the ice as Sedano Chara brings it forward. Johnny Boychuk on the off side for him. The right shot on the left on that rush. Chara swiveling it across the zone. Ellis and Krejci go to the end board. 
Klein shoves it loose. There's Smith. Can't clear the zone, but it bounces past Hamilton. And the play's offside with Krejci stuck inside the line. Johnny Boychuk taking him and dishing him out. 0-0, 11-11 to go in the first. First trivia question. What Bruins forward is part of one of six father-son duos, both to play at least 600 National Hockey League games? Visit Nesson.com slash The Fours for the answer and enter to win a $50 gift certificate that can be used at The Fours Restaurant and Sports Bar in Boston, Quincy, or Norwell. You know, Bricky had us going on the recent road trip. Thinking of uh, all those combinations. I, I never got them all. <laughs> Spent a little time thinking about it. The, uh, the Bruin becomes pretty obvious. The beautiful thing about that, uh, when you get on the road and you go to uh, places like Western Canada and you have a lot of downtime, those are the things you can do. Yeah. That and you can collect some brilliant diagrams on cocktail napkins that are going to make a great instructional book someday. <laughs> Matt Fraser on a little pop-up. And it comes back to Johnny Boychuk. Skates it over the line, taps back to Spooner. Spooner turns at the hash marks, fires it right on Mazanis. Surprised him a little bit as it came right through Kevin Klein, who is setting up as a defenseman at the post. Spooner belts it off his linemate, Fraser. Fraser goes into the corner against Klein. Good shift by the Spooner line here as they get set to change out. It was a good play by Johnny Boychuk, too. He just didn't say, all right, I can get the blue line and dump it in. He made a play. Brought people to him in that little indirect drop pass back to Spooner. Ellis cross ice for Colin Wilson. He closes on Hamilton's side. The shot same. Spedberg a juicy rebound, but Marchand is there to take it right off the skate of Mike Fisher. He can't control. And Jones spins it back to center. Chara does not complete the pass. It's Fisher with the head fake, fires, and a shoulder save by Spedberg to knock the puck into the netting. Shots are 7-5 in favor of the Bruins. 9.42 to go in the first. It's 0-0 in Snowy TD Garden. Well, if you're looking for signs tonight that the Boston Bruins are paying attention to detail, and that detail, number one, is compete and bring it. On the power play, Lucic attacking the net. Good net drive by the rest of the power play unit. Structure in the neutral zone, creating the turnover in the shorthanded situation. Johnny Boychuk with big body contact on Cullen and then making the shot block. All good signs that Boston knows where their shortcomings were against the Islanders. Mike Fisher on the faceoff. Three goals and three assists in his last two games. Patrice Bergeron getting behind Fisher. Backhands it wide. Smith back to Hamilton the drive. Locked down. Alan Wilson on the block. Hamilton throws it into Bergeron's body. He turns, can't fire it through Jones. Hamilton pinches down, knocks down his teammate Bergeron, and Jones takes it back of the Nashville net. Now starts out. Gets between Marchand and Bergeron. Ahead to Fisher. Off the boards, past Hornquist. Chara turns with Hornquist pestering him. Chara spoons it out to center. Marchand absorbs the hit from Hornquist, and Bergeron drives it in deep. The Bruins change out, so does Nashville. Shea Weber slings the puck to Yossi. Cross ice into the stick of Cullen. Cullen's long wrist shot saves Bedford. The rebound crude pokes it away from Victor Stahlberg, who is closing fast. Jordan Caron taps the backhand ahead of Pai flying up the left wing against Klein. Klein can't clear the zone. Campbell off the legs of Ellis. Now off the stick of Ellis. Back to McQuaid. Puck on edge. The drive and a stick save Mazanitz up off the end glass. Caron past Klein down into the corner to Pae. Pae rakes the puck back. Ellis takes it on a pose. Ellis with a tight turn now weaves to get the puck forward to Stahlberg. Stahlberg slides it off the corner boards, chases hard. Spenberg indirect off the end boards to Krug. Krug leads out Daniel Pae. Pae pulls up against Yossi, waiting for fresh legs off the bench, softly tumbling it down into Yossi's corner. Yossi finds Gabriel Bork, trickles it up through the neutral zone, and Barkowski turns it back to Lucic. To Aginla, the Bruins looking for a seam in transition. Not there, so Aginla dumps it in deep. Lozanich gives it right back to Aginla, to Lucic. Working against Weber, uses Aginla's pick. 
McKinley spins on Weber, absorbs the hit, one hands it in front, just past Krejci. Eric Nystrom into Krejci's body, he bounces it back to Boychuk. 58 degrees in our broadcast booth when we began this game tonight, <laughs> so the ice ought to be excellent. It's chilly in the building. Dougie Hamilton gives it forward to David Krejci. Now it's Char over the line. If you're wondering how we know, it's because statistician Scott Shore knows everything. Here's Aginla closing the shot. Same as in it. Chara all the way down to the goal line. And it bounces around to the near side. Hops up off Lucic's stick. He caves in Nystrom, who ices it. And the faceoff back down to the Predators zone. Tune in for episode 7 of Behind the Bee, presented by Alex and Ani, this Tuesday night at 8 or 9 p.m. Missed any of the previous episodes? No problem. Stream them online wherever and whenever you want by visiting bostonbruins.com slash behind the bee or the Bruins mobile app. Rostad and Spooner on the faceoff. Ryan Spooner's been putting in extra time working on his draws. Tries to spin Gostad, but Gostad is a monster, and he just leverages him off. Barkowski waves at it, gets a glove on it, and then Splitter picks it up, so it must have been ruled off of Nystrom. No, they <laughs> finally pick up that it's a hand pass. Yeah, a little delay in the call. Yeah. yeah, you go back to that, uh, it was a 6-2 game right in Nashville that Boston won just before Christmas. Yep. 23rd. Mazanitz has already given Nashville the saves that they didn't get from Hutton early in that game. Couldn't resist but look up uh, Carter Hutton's lifetime against the Boston Bruins after he played all 559 and allowed two goals on four shots. His goals against average is 20 and his save percentage is 500. Sort of like batting averages at the beginning of a baseball season. George Bell had six RBI on opening day once he was on you know, <laughs> 700 RBI pace. Otto Velez. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he cooled off a little. Sedano Chara turns away from Hornquist. Hornquist, because he plays in Nashville, probably isn't appreciated for all the skill and tenacity that he has. But he is a, one of those slicing Scandinavian forwards. Ton of talent, and he plays with a nice edge. Yeah, there was an interesting exchange uh, when he and uh, Marchand were both making a line change. Got a little nasty when both were going to their bench near proximity. Oh, well, nasty is good. <laughs> McGinley feeds Markowski, the defenseman over the line. The wrist shot, save Lozanitz. Krejci in the corner, the diagonal to Boychuk, taps to the dot to Aginla. Aginla into the slot, but Shea Weber is there to knock it away from Krejci. Craig Smith on the far side, battles it loose and knocks it through the neutral zone. Barkowski has an edge on Spallin. Boychuk to Aginla, taps to Krejci. Krejci works against Yossi, it's off Yossi's stick and out of play, the faceoff in the Nashville end. 5.22 to go in the first period. Bruins out shooting Nashville 10-7 in this one. Earlier on Bruins Face Off Live, we introduced tonight's Nesson Mobile Bruins poll. Which player not being on the 2014 Team USA roster surprised you most? Text A for Kyle Ocposo, B for Bobby Ryan, C for Brandon Saad, or D for Keith Yandel. Text your answer to 536-536. Messing and data rates may apply. Text help for info or visit nesson.com slash terms for terms and conditions and privacy policy. Jack, do you agree with those numbers so far? I was amazed that Oposo wasn't uh, selected. Yeah, the guys he's a competitor. He's tough. He's played with a lot of those guys who are already on the team. And he's on a wicked roll right now. And he's about to become a daddy, which often, you know, you often see a real bump from players when they become first-time fathers. Yeah, you can understand the big number for Bobby Ryan. Uh, he was on the last Olympic team that lost out on the gold by one shot. Yep. We'll chew the fat on uh, the instigators a little later tonight on Nesson if you want to tune in for that. That was, that was good spleen venting. <laughs> we, uh, we laid it to tape, uh, or is it disc now, revealing myself as a dinosaur a little earlier tonight. 
A lot of back references, spleens, discs. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you showed some spine in that show, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> yeah, you don't have too many discs to spare, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> they keep taking them out. <laughs> You're running out of body parts. Oh, boy. You know, uh, watching hockey, especially the Bruins, Brick, it's a tribal experience. And uh, it's great that you're joining us tonight because, I mean, what else would you be doing? <laughs> Shoveling? That's great, though. Throw a log on the fire. Have some fun. Barkowski off the boards. Soderbergh feeds it forward to Fraser. Fraser having a hard time getting it out, and Ellis escapes, and he does. Gostad blocks off Spooner, and here comes Ellis, who loves to rush the puck. Nystrom, the shot saved by Spedberg. Pop-up rebound at the end boards. McQuay takes a big hit from Nystrom. Can't clear the zone. Fine. Sends it around the boards. Ryan Ellis waiting for it. Ellis slips it to the dot. The turnaround by Nystrom. Open side. Hendricks. And a block by Barkowski. Hendricks indirect for Klein. Klein drives it for Nystrom. High slot. Couldn't redirect it on goal. This is an energy line for Nashville. And the Predators sense of vulnerability from Boston being able to outcompete the Bruins. Here's Nystrom trying to weave between McQuaid and Soderbergh. Gostad and Barkowski in the corner. Good zone time for Nashville on this ship. Spooner finally clears the zone, trickles it into the attacking end. Well, it started with the three forwards for Boss and caught a little bit deep. It was a three on two, which the Bruins actually defended well. They gave up probably the least dangerous shot, the wrist shot by Nystrom from, the, from about the tops of the circle. And Svedberg handled it well, controlled the rebound behind the goal line, but then the forechecking pressure took over by that energy line. Hornquist, second chance. This one makes the strings tremble outside the goal. Bergeron perfectly positioned to intercept. Fisher's pass intended for Hornquist. Hornquist drills Smith, who takes the hit to move the puck to Bergeron. Cross ice for Marshy and can't control. Hamilton jumping up, and the Bruins are a little fortunate that Nashville makes an impatient clear because the Preds would have had numbers. Well, Marshan, though, had a chance to find uh, Hamilton coming late. If you're going to corral it, let's go back to the shot. Nystrom's going to let it fly. The deflection by Bartkowski actually works to Hendricks' favor, but Bartkowski... That's the effort the Bruins were looking for the other night. That kind of last second, give it all you got. Barkowski does just enough to deflect that puck wide of an open net. Bergeron takes the feed from Smith off the boards. And I was asking you the other night, we never had the chance. Riley Smith talks about Patrice Bergeron giving him the stick, showing him where he wants to pass. Right, and if you can ideally deliver it where he wants it, then you're going to get the quickness of the play that you're looking for. However, you're in the ideal spot to, you know, give a target for your teammate, but you're also in the ideal spot to be able to react to a pass, whether it's on backhand, forehand, or away in your feet, wherever it is. It's your job to handle it. You want the perfect pass, but you're not going to get it every time. Marshand in the corner. O'Reilly well, Smith quickly has shown that he is an elite-level passer, but when asked about it, he will always deflect the credit to the guy on the receiving end, just speaking glowingly of how great it is to work with Bergeron. And here he is to Bergeron. And the snapshot goes off Legwan stick. Loose at the post. And Mazanitz covers. Yeah, right on cue. Bergeron has that stick just off his right hip saying, you want to slide this to me? I don't know that one time ago. Riley Smith, number one in goals with the Bruins now. 14, tied for second with 17 helpers. And uh, those 31 points, I think, surprise a lot of Bruins fans. I don't think it's any surprise really to Riley Smith or the Bruins management team that identified this was one of the guys that they wanted in the deal that involved saying, and not just Louis Erickson, but a kid that was really just had gotten a taste of the NHL. The skill set was there. The hockey IQ maybe his strongest asset and now you see them merely make plays and he's elusive and what a nice fit in the room he is too he's he's another one of those low-key guys Bergeron Krejci also of that kind of personality type they play like Tigers but uh, they just want to be part of the team nothing special no, there's McQuaid reintroducing himself <laughs> to Eric Nystrom. We'll keep track of that one. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to see Hendrick oh. step in the way yeah. before those two lock yeah. up again. Well, I think he was jealous because he saw the shrapnel coming off of the, 
<laughs> for that bout. That was as good a trading of big blows as we have seen this season. Here it is just for fun on the 23rd of December. Yeah, well, they both sought each other out, and clearly they wanted to drop the gloves, and that was that big right hand by Nystrom. And we had a chance to visit with Butch Goring when the Islanders were in town, and uh, Eric Nystrom's dad, I think we're all familiar with who that is, Bobby Nystrom. 1980 Stanley Cup winning goal. Yeah, and, uh, and Butch was talking about uh, how tough his dad was, and we would say, well, you should have seen this right that Nystrom hit McQuaid with. But it was McQuaid's reaction to the punch that was priceless. Don't shoot, Mongo. It only makes him mad. <laughs> Hendricks to take the draw against Lucic here. Roman Yossi turns the goal. There's Nystrom. Gidla puts the body on him. They were teammates for a while in Calgary. Bystrom down the wing against Barkowski. Sets the edges but loses his balance. Boychuk plays the body all the way against Gostad. Hendricks intercepts. Comes off a body. Again, bunts it into Lucic. He skates. He handles it nicely and then flips it down the wing. Weber and again, Olympic teammates for Team Canada in 2010. Matt Cullen dribbles it into Chara's corner. Blows an edge, gets underneath the check. Stahlberg back to Jones, fakes the shot, dribbles it to the right side. Stahlberg with a big reach, but it goes past Cullen. It's not a bad time to blow an edge if you're Cullen with Chara right behind you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's probably not going to check you low. <laughs> Soderberg back to the six foot nine inch captain of the Bruins. That's one of those examples where you start to lose your balance. You're like, okay, I'm good with that. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Into the final minute of the first period. Vote for the Amica coverage play of the week and enter to win a $100 gift certificate to the pro shop at TD Garden, courtesy of Nesson. Enter now at Nesson.com slash Amica coverage camp. Tip of the cap to the ice crew here at TD Garden. There, you know, there are a ton of events here. And uh, sometimes it's quick turnaround and they do the best they can. But on a day when it's been cold and snowy, that's playing right into their roundhouse. The surface is excellent tonight. Yossi's wrist shot goes off of Campbell's body. Weber taps it, and it goes about 80 miles an hour across ice. Fortress. Fisher back of the goal against Campbell. Campbell wins the puck battle. That's the kind of thing that Peter Shirelli was talking about, and Brick was emphasizing pregame. High of the dart into Soderberg skates. Wilson back to the red line. Chara cross ice for Pie. Just wants to get it deep in the final 30 seconds. Yossi off the boards and out. Colin Wilson against Johnny Boychuk. Wilson tries to go inside. Boychuk took the body. Soderberg to Chara. Chara goes back into space. It trickles ahead. Yossi scrapes it forward for Wilson. Wilson with Hornquist going toward the goal. Boychuk unopposed on the end boards, aware of the clock, not making a dangerous play, hands it off to Bergeron, he trickles it out. And you consider some of the dicey puck management the Bruins had in the final minutes, especially very early in this season. There's an example of Johnny Boychuk showing good clock awareness. Yeah, you got to believe that it's been brought to the players' attention that they need to be better in the final minute or two of each period. And uh, you're right, that was better. I'd like to still see him spend more time in the offensive zone in those situations. But not a bad first period. You know Nashville, how they play. They compete. They brought it. But the Bruins matched it. Yep. First goal is going to be huge in this one, Dale. Nashville's the most sensitive team in the league to scoring or allowing the first goal. And I assume you mean it doesn't make them real sad. Alongside Andy Brickley with Jamie Yerdahl at ice level and our Nesson production crew, I'm Jack Edwards. It is 0-0 between the Bruins and the Nashville Predators as we head toward the second period. Dougie Hamilton had a double-digit rest as he was recovering from a lower body injury, and Jamie has more. A key factor back for the Bruins' blue line tonight as Dougie Hamilton made his return to the lineup after suffering a lower body injury in Toronto almost a month ago. Now, as Dougie was making his return to the ice, he said it took some time getting used to getting hit again, pushing guys, and getting back into the dirty areas, which is quite a requirement for Bruins defensemen. Now, with the comeback, Dougie will be wearing a knee brace on his left knee for the remainder of the season. It prevents any awkward lateral movement when he does get hit again. And he's also considering wearing another brace on his right knee just to even things out as he makes his way back to the ice. Yeah, sometimes symmetry makes an athlete feel better. After 10 games, he's back. 
Jamie in the Xfinity High Def Zone brought to you by the Xfinity Triple Play TV, Internet, and Voice. So, Brick, uh, how would you grade the Bruins on a 1-10 to 10 for compete level in the first period against the Nashville Predators? I got them somewhere between 7 and 8. Yep. Uh, and maybe if they could do a little bit more with their offensive game or their forechecking game or establish their forechecking game a little bit more on a consistent basis, maybe that compete factor rises a little bit. I think the 7-8 to 8 number is reflective of a pretty balanced game. You know, maybe the number's a little bit higher. And you heard Gregory Campbell talking about, we know what this Nashville team's about. We got three power play goals in that 6-2 win. But five on five, it was a pretty competitive game. And that's what they expected they were going to get tonight. And they're getting it. Yeah, one power play for each team in the first period. The Bruins spending 41 more seconds in the attacking zone on their power play than Barry Trotz's Predators did on theirs. The first period summary brought to you by your New England Ford dealers. And if you're just joining us across the top of the hour, glad you can be with us on this snowy New England night. It's a good night to watch a hockey game. An impressive turnout at TD Garden is I'm going to ballpark it about uh, 15,000 people made it into this building that has the capacity of 17,565 for hockey. David Krejci gets tossed out of the faceoff. Jerome McGinley takes it against David Legwan. Barkowski controls. He's paired with Johnny Boychuk. Krejci over the line, tries to swerve away from Roman Yossi. Gives Yossi a little pop. Boychuk comes down from the point, but Spalling gets the puck to Legwan. Hard into the zone. Nicholas Vedberg playing his first NHL game, handling the puck to Matt Barkowski. One hands it to Lucic. Into Krejci's skates, he swivels it over the line, but Gillo is in ahead of the play, and so was Krejci for that. Nice little chip pass by Svedberg. Yeah. Good poise, held on to it, little sauce pass below the goal line to Barkowski. Bruins able to walk out of the zone. Thank you. Rick, you talked about the difference in styles between European-trained goalies and North American-trained goalies. Yeah, fewer shots in Europe. A lot more plays made in and around the net. The patience of the European player looking for the best chance closest to the goal. Whereas the North American game is shots on goals, attack the net, second and third opportunities, rebounds, shots from just about anywhere in the offensive zone. And goaltenders that play deep in their net, they can be victimized by that. Patrick Hornquist cycles it to Mike Fisher. The pass comes off Chara's stick. Now Smith leading out Marshand. Marshand draws it wide against Seth Jones, who plays it nicely and deflects the puck across to the far corner. Mike Fisher charging back toward the Boston zone. Gains the line with Hornquist. High slot. Fisher's pass goes off the stick of Dougie Hamilton all the way around to Brad Marshand. Now Riley Smith makes the safe dump in. The Bruins get a full chance. And the other part of that goaltending, uh, and there's many layers to it, but puck handling. The ability to handle the puck. The European trained goaltenders generally don't handle the puck a ton. It's not one of their strengths and their skills, and that's why we point out that little pass by Svetberg. That's an important part of the game here in, uh, in the National Hockey League. He took a big step last year with that 37-win season in the American League. A little bit disappointing in the playoffs when his uh, goals against average jumped up to 3.29 and his save percentage dropped to 889 but that's what the american league is largely about player yeah. development yeah and disappointing for him let's say statistically disappointing for the team you know they're looking to do something in the postseason but more importantly was the experience of the postseason in the american hockey league and just like the nhl it's another level and he had a heck of a camp and that's why he's here. Boyd Julian promised him he'd get the chance to play. Gabriel Bork against Tory Krug. Krug angles him off. Bork gets it middle. Now it comes all the way through to Cullen. But he couldn't flip the backhand on goal. Stahlberg creating something in the slot as he used his big frame. Matt Fraser softly up the boards around the corner. And then he puts the body on Ryan Ellis. Spooner almost steps in front. Ellis up the wall, past Stahlberg's reach. Bartkowski goes cross-corner with it. The Bruins tag up to get onside, and they'll just change out. And Soderberg was all by himself in the slot. If Spooner could have came up with that puck clean. 
Johnny Boyd shot hard around, but a good anticipation. Sent right into the middle, and Nystrom unable to connect after Hendricks did the dirty work on the end boards. Gostad gets stood up on Boychuk's hit. Now Barkowski. Physical game here. The Predators always have played a heavy style. Nystrom's wrist shot deflects and goes well wide. Long bounce out past the red line. Klein has to retrieve in his own end. He blows the tire. Now Paye attacks the puck. Klein gets it up the boards, but not out. Barkowski, the defenseman, all the way down to the goal line. Paye A-frames, but Ellis gets it away from him. Caron takes a stab at the puck. Chara taps it over to Barkowski. It's linesman Lonnie Cameron. Mark Wheeler and Lonnie Cameron calling the Lions for their second consecutive game at TD Garden. And they found out today that they're going to do three in a row because they can't get out of town tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so what the heck? Enjoy the snowstorm. Stick around. We'll see you Saturday. <laughs> Char off the boards. Lucic steers the puck forward to Krejci. He gains the line with Lucic driving the net. Krejci... Goes all the way around to the right wing corner, stays on the perimeter, tosses it back into Klein skates. He cracks it around to the near side, and leg one can't clear past Chara. Now Lucic shielding the puck. Lucic cycles it for Krejci. Krejci down to Chara, he spins it just past Aguilar's reach, but Aguilar recovers the puck out the other side. Good zone time here for the Bruins, but it's all in the perimeter. Now Hamilton hard across the line. Chara behind Krejci. Krejci recovers it. Chara to Lucic coming out high. Chara's wrist shot just past the post with Aguilar jamming against Klein. Well, initially there wasn't enough movement when David Krejci had the puck. Everybody kind of standing around hoping he's going to make a nice pass to them. But you got to have more motion. Then the motion started. All of a sudden, you got something good going. A number of passes. Finally, the wrist shot with a little traffic by Chara. Aguilar right at the top of the crease. 40 seconds of zone time on that shift alone. Yeah, it was almost as if they were saying, wow, look at Krejci go. <laughs> he's good. <laughs> yeah, well, Lucic was at the top of the crease, and he's just going to hold his ground expecting yeah. a play to be made, and he wants to have that net front presence. You know, but the other three players needed a little bit more motion in order to find an open spot to give Krejci some options. Riley Smith cuts back using Bergeron's movement. Now here's Marchand with speed. Looks for Bergeron. He trickles it across the slot. Hornquist rolls the puck past Barkowski. Boychuk snaps it around for Smith. Smith taps to Bergeron. It's under his backhand, but Marchand battles. Bergeron gains the line. Marchand goes to goal. Bergeron spins down at the hash marks. For a moment there, he had his edge caught. Sometimes you can see a player get an ankle or knee injury in a situation like that, but Bergeron's right back up. Barkowski cuts over the line. The wrist shot going wide. But the Zanets will hang on to it. Tonight, following Bruins coverage, stay with Nesson and join Adam and Gary for Nesson Sports Today. Presented by People's United Bank, they'll have more on the Bruins. Shalise Manzi Young will report for Patriots practice. And Peter Abraham will check in with the latest on the Red Sox offseason. Get all that more tonight after postgame coverage. To Rask having a look at this one. Often you look forward to a Nashville-Boston game. It's a great showdown between two of the excellent Goalies in the game, Tuka Rask and Pekka Rene. Rene had hip surgery in October, and he was on the road to recovery when they discovered a bacterial infection as a result of the surgery. And he is on a long protocol of medication. And is still in a shutdown period, not even able to work out. So you consider how much of Nashville's Entire philosophy is built on being strong in the goals, strong on D. Stahlberg closes and Spedberg squeezes the knees. That kind of undermines the whole plan for the Predators. A couple of fins. Yeah. We're asking Rinna. Yeah. You were making fun of me last year because I was talking about Nashville and we'd all go to that Italian restaurant, Pecorino. <laughs> You're going. I'm, I'm going to Tootsie's. Yeah. I heard you went to Legends and Tootsie's yeah. last time we were I, I was a spectator there. That's all. <laughs> they do serve food in those places, by the way, <laughs> along with the music. <laughs> Hendricks 
Brings it back to Jones, slings it over to Eckholm, who's looking for his first NHL goal, but it's off Spooner's stick. Gost had the big body against Campbell on the end board, shielding the puck. Campbell bangs away at him. That's Nystrom coming out of the corner against Boychuk. Eckholm handles it nicely in his skates. Hendricks takes the hit from Boychuk. Nystrom kicks the puck back to the corner. Campbell takes it, doesn't get anything on the forehand. Hendricks' shot sizzles wide on the glove side. Seth Jones. Wraps it down through the corner. Gostad holds. Hendricks, bad angle shot. Nice save by Spedberg. Denying Hendricks the corner. 13.38 to go. Second period. 0-0 inside the garden. Outside the garden, you don't want to have to dig out your car. No score Bruins Predators. Second period. Nicholas Spedberg getting the nod tonight for the Boston Bruins in goal. Talked about his European trained background and the things you need to learn to play in the North American game. You gotta get out of your net and hit all the wraparounds. You wanna help out your D when you can with making good decisions with the puck. And that was a real good one. Nice little pass, short pass. Matt Barkowski to beat the four check. Bruins able to walk out. Krejci and leg one on the face off. And Krejci gets tossed out. David Leguan in his 15th season, drafted number two overall by Nashville in 1998. Craig Smith with a tight turn, tries to pick the short side high. Already has a post crossbar shot in the first period. High on the glove side on Spedberg. Had both goals in that 6-2 loss to the Bruins just before Christmas. He's got a good release. Back foot snapshot. Try to beat Svedberg short side. Madison, Wisconsin boy. McGinley takes it right up the lane, but Lucic is ahead of the playoff side. Don't miss the 2014 City Frozen Fenway this Saturday. Merrimack and Providence will hit the ice at four, followed by Notre Dame taking on BC. Tickets are still available by, by visiting redsox.com slash frozen Fenway or by calling 877-RED-SOX-9. It's the 2014 City Frozen Fenway, and it's live on Nesson. I'll save you the details, but we're going to have nonstop sports on Nesson from noon until about 11 o'clock at night on Saturday. We got uh, what's going on? Uh, we got a Bruins game. <laughs> Winnipeg's in town, and yeah, well, here you go. Well, look at that. You know, you just start talking about something, all of a sudden the graphic just appears. Big Bad Bruins starts at noon. Jets and Bruins, yeah, Winnipeg comes to town looking for some warm weather. <laughs> and then overtime live, followed by Merrimack Providence, Notre Dame, BC. And then Essen Sports today. Riley Smith with speed around the net, looking for Bergeron jamming against Fisher, and Fisher blocks the shot. Bergeron attacks the puck as he tries to bring some more energy. The Bruins with just one shot on goal in the first seven minutes of the second period. Second periods have been astoundingly problematic for Boston. This is the halfway point of the 82-game season. And the Bruins have a negative second period goal differential. Minus one. Astonishing for a team that is so strong in all categories. Brad Marchand lifts the stick of Colin Wilson. The puck comes back toward Jones. Bergeron out to the neutral zone. Eckholm can't get it through. Bergeron cross ice. Here's Smith with Marchand going to the net. Eckholm makes the block. Off the boards for Hornquist, and he chips it into the Boston bench. And Hornquist and McQuaid exchange niceties. Not going to be a whole lot of nasty from Hornquist there. No. <laughs> but the Bruins had an opportunity. Bergeron knowing, I'm just going to get this puck across the ice in the direction of Smith and Marchand and let them sort it out. Maybe a two-on-one, maybe a two-on-o oh initially. And he makes that backhand pass in the neutral zone just by pursuing the puck. Bruins had a real good opportunity there, but Marchand couldn't glove the puck down. And then a nice recovery by Eckholm defensively to stay in the passing shooting lane. Now Soderberg to take the face off against Gostad after Spooner had been overmatched in that physical confrontation earlier. And Gostad won that one as well. Gostad played for Bruins assistant coach Doug Huda in Rochester years ago. Huda to this day speaks glowingly of Gostad's 
work ethic, his willingness to improve himself every day. Cullen tries to pirouette to the middle. A shot from Stahlberg scoots underneath. Stahlberg jams it loose off the kick plate. Klein's one-timer goes wide and caroms out the other side. Bounces up toward Matt Fraser. McQuaid gets up. Little hitch in his step. Fraser with a dart. It goes off the end glass. Boychuk jabs at the puck, keeps it alive. Stahlberg muscles it out to the neutral zone. Boychuk reaches back to stay on side as he was tangled with Stahlberg. <laughs> At least Colin skate back to the neutral zone. Yeah, and he had no idea where the puck was because he was in a bad position. He was down towards the ice, but he knew he wanted to be on side, thinking the Bruins had a chance for a counter. The play wasn't really happening. He was doing everything he could to stay on side. <laughs> Sheer effort by Boychuk, actually kind of lifting Stahlberg as he got his leg back across the blue line. Here's Campbell with a little hop in his step. Wrists it to the corner. Pie gets underneath Yossi. Yossi pops it up. Campbell goes head first into the boards after a hit against Nystrom. Now Boychuk spins it low. Campbell turns off the hit by Yossi right in front for Pie. Caron takes the carom off the end boards. Terrific shift by Gregory Campbell here. Johnny Boychuk. Caron tries to kick it deep. Boychuk below the dot in the corner. Off the apron of the goal. Campbell jamming away. Gregory Campbell single-handedly trying to raise his team's game, doing it with effort and with brains. Yeah, and it started with Campbell just chipping the puck in, even if he thinks he might have a, a chance to make an offensive one-on-one -on -one move. He knows it's about getting pucks deep and winning the battles along the wall. And he does exactly that below the goal line. Made a play to the front of the net through traffic. Pai just doesn't get a lot on that one-timer. And now he's just going to wait his turn to stay in front of the net and wait for pucks to get there in his battle. Pretty good effort by the fourth line. Both fourth lines giving the effort today. Yep. And that allows the Krejci line to start its shift in the attacking zone. Krejci back to Hamilton. Wrists it down through the corner. Shea Weber chips it up the wall. Craig Smith a little touch pass for Leguan. And Alviosi has space up the left side. Lucic closing. Hamilton a nice adjustment. Blocks it with the skate, but the pass a little off the mark for Aginla. And maybe we can attribute that to some rust as Dougie Hamilton has missed a 10 straight game. Yeah, a good decision to hold his ground because of the great back check by Lucic. Not allowing uh, anything for Nashville. After a pretty nice breakout touch pass by Smith, they get a little speed, leg wand on uh, you know, up ice, but the back check by Lucic allows Hamilton to hold his ground. So that's a good decision, but you're right, I think there is a little rust on his uh, ability to make that quick pass to a given, thus the icing. Lucic back to Chara, draws Colin Wilson, goes off the end boards for Hamilton, Hamilton up the boards. McGinley can't clear the zone, Yossi sends it deep. Chara has Krejci to his left. Now Aginla breaking across the goal mound. Tries to go up the middle for Krejci. It's off Colin Wilson. Stick dribbles down towards Svedberg. He pokes it loose. Hoikvist shot saved by Svedberg. Out the other side. Fisher tries the no-angle shot, but he's no John Tavares. There's David Krejci out to the red line. You had to have seen the Islanders game to understand that one. Lucic down low. Swivels it in front looking for Aginla. And the Bruins almost had a golden transition chance off of that flurry. Krug with the tight turn in the corner. Goes north and south and rattles around. Hits Riley Smith in the helmet. Gabriel Bork chipping past Krug, but he plays the body. Bergeron against Bork. Bork gets it across to Stahlberg. He reverses it past Bork. That allows Smith to take it on a pose. So quickly his space goes away as Cullen is right on him. Smith wins the puck battle to Bergeron over to Marsham, but he can't control it. McQuaid off Bergeron's stick. Bounces into the attacking zone. Marshan did not keep it on side. Stahlberg extends the strides, tries to turn the corner, and McQuaid makes a nice play. Marshan gets hammered on Eckholm's hit, but moves the puck cross ice. Krug carries it over the line. Chris crosses with Bergeron. Riley Smith tries to cowboy over the boards and knees open the door. Hey, crude but effective. He cut off the ice. Eckholm backhands it up through the neutral zone. Barkowski. Now Ryan Spooner on the turn with speed goes through the legs of Jones to the end board. Spooner back for Boychuk holds it on the line wrists it into the body of Nystrom and Spooner recovers the puck.
Ryan Spooner again with speed over the line. Picks up the self-pass against Eckholm. Draws it. Gives it over to Fraser. Fraser slides directly underneath the goalie. And on they go. Mazanitz losing his stick for a moment. He lost his stick in two goal sequences against Detroit. Spooner across the goal mouth looking for Soderberg, but he can't connect. Boychuk rams it into the goal mouth. The Bruins starting to buzz the Nashville net, finding an attacking zone rhythm. He can trace it back to that terrific shift by Gregory Campbell, which raised Boston's energy level. And Spooner really just controlling this shift for his line mates. The speed through center ice, the self-pass indirect off the wall, and he was able to find Fraser stepping into a quality scoring area. Second real good shot by Fraser tonight. Spooner's making the players around him better, which is what you want your centers to do. Yeah, this is that play where he just generates speed on his own through center ice, chip it through the traffic, get it yourself, pull up, find someone coming late, draw people to you. I mean, that's classic playmaking skill. Fraser gets the chance, and then later on that shift, Spooner had the puck short side, trying to make a pass right through the crease, looking for Soderbergh. Timeout for Nashville. You know, we mentioned how important it is for Nashville to score the first goal. Teams around the NHL do 37% better. That's the league average. 37% better scoring the first goal as opposed to allowing the first goal. Nashville does 71% better scoring the first goal than allowing the first goal. That is the most sensitive team in the league to scoring the first goal. The, the power grouping is between fifth and ninth most sensitive, 44 to 50 percent. You got teams like St. Louis and, and Pittsburgh and Chicago in that group. The Bruins are ranked 18th right around the league average, 34 percent better scoring first than allowing first. And that's a big part of why Barry Trotz opted to call the timeout right there. The other part of that is the expectation, the way this game is going. You're looking at a one nothing, 2 one kind of finish. Yep. So important juncture, and uh, he didn't want this to be a critical time where you make a mistake due to fatigue. Hendricks trying to turn the corner on Chara, the wraparound, and Spedberg makes the save. Matt Hendricks with the effort to bring the puck 180 feet up ice for the next faceoff. Butcher Bank, exciting rewind. Coming up next, 30 seconds from now, Brick looks at that first period power play, so dynamic for the Bruins. Time now for the Berkshire Bank exciting rewind. We will rewind it back to the first period. The Bruins with a man advantage. Chara out on the wing. Good quick puck movement. You want to get that puck transferred from side to side if you can in order to get the penalty killing structure to have to shift. It creates more passing lanes. Chara, Crew, Krejci, Aginla all moving it real quick. And even though Aginla wants to try to force this one back across the ice in the direction of Chara, the Bruins are able to still maintain possession. The low play was there in the first period on that power play. It came from both sides. The first one was Lucic. The overload, Chara to Lucic. There's a lane to the net. You've got to take it. That first move by the low guy on either side of the goal line has to be towards the net if that play is there. And you also have Tory Krug on the, on the net attack as well from that point position. The Bruins were able to do a number of good things with that man advantage. Just couldn't find the back of the net. Every month, Berkshire Bank is giving away a Kindle Fire HD. Plus, at the end of the season, Berkshire Bank will assist one lucky winner with their mortgage for a year. All you need to do is vote for your favorite exciting rewind. Go to Nesson.com slash Berkshire Bank to enter. Berkshire Bank, life is exciting. Let them help. Well, the Bruins had four shots on goal during that power play in the first period in which they had the puck in the attacking zone for all but 13 seconds of the man advantage. Maybe it's going to take a second period power play to get Boston some more shots on goal. The Bruins with just one shot on goal here in the second period. Yeah, they really haven't been able to activate their D, and part of that is that, uh, you know, you got Dougie Hamilton back. This is his first game in 10. What are your expectations for him? You still have some young guys back there on the blue line. Uh, you're not completely healthy up front, and you're playing a team that has a tremendous work ethic. They have great back pressure. They have real good structure, and they're a team on the outside looking in, and points are at a premium for them, so you know you're going to get their best effort. But the Bruins haven't really been able to activate a defense, except for a couple of times, to help create more offense. Colin Wilson, the self-pass, trying to get away from Krejci. 
The turning shot from Craig Smith in on Spedberg. Weber with the extension knocks the puck flat in the neutral zone. The ice in tremendous shape tonight at TD Garden. Hornquist takes the cross ice pass. The shot up high on Spedberg goes after the rebound. Spedberg pokes it loose to the corner. McKinley has Lucic. You could hear him grunt demanding the pass. The wrist shot and a leg save by Mazanis. Dougie Hamilton through the traffic, finds the puck, chips it for Krejci, but it bounces to the Zamboni doors. Back to Chara, the wrist shot toward goal. And a good play by Ryan Ellis stepping ahead of the Kinlan. Zdeno Chara, cross ice, Dougie Hamilton. Hamilton through the spoke B. The drive goes off Ellis's stick. Up and out of play. Five and a half to go. Second period. Bruins and Nashville. Two strong defensive teams. Still 0-0. Hey, Arnold with a Toyota game break. Chicago at the Islanders. Second period. Andrew McDonald shot from the point. Thomas Spanik there to put in the rebound. His 14th of the year. 2-0 Islanders. How about the pesky Islanders, Jack? They, they may never lose another game. <laughs> hey, that team had a season changer out in Minnesota after falling behind 3-0. And they found a way to win that game. And then they came from two down to beat Boston by two. And now they're ahead by a pair tonight. And uh, maybe Kyle Pozo is playing with a B under his bonnet because it was near consensus that he was going to be on the U.S. Olympic team, but not so. Victor Stolberg with a huge strides to Cullen. But Krug blocks the shot. Cullen comes out the other side, throws it into the goal mouth. It's loose there. And back to the neutral zone. Eckholm pokes the puck to the boards. Marshan gives it back. McQuaid up to the red line. Riley Smith gets the backhand on it. Mazanitz around out of the stick of Eckholm in front. Smith shot saved by Mazanitz. Marshan, McQuaid. Krug, the wrist shot with Bergeron screening in a battle with Eckholm. Now it's Marshan spinning off the Seth Jones hit. It's off the shaft of Seth Jones' stick. Jones controls it. Stick handles out. Goes in direct out of the zone looking for Stahlberg. It deflects back to Jones. Over the Boston line around McQuaid. And a save by Spedberg. Literally the length of the ice by Seth Jones. But Spedberg denies him a highlight goal. Marshan pulls up in the eddy of the flow. Smith's drive and a blocker save. Mazanich. End to end they go in the best exchange of action all night long. Campbell takes the puck to the boards. Bork gets it ahead. And Gostad flips in deep. Gostad hard against Boychuk to the end board. Campbell right there in support. Barkowski up the wall. It bounds past Paye and Klein. Mazanitz out to play it. Hendricks up to the neutral zone. Barkowski gets a piece of the puck. Hendricks muscles it up to the red line. Gets it back off Paye. The shot saved by Spedberg. And off his shoulder, it goes up and over the glass out of play. End to end they go. Now Riley Smith had two real good opportunities on the same shift. The first one was the best one. The turnover, Cullen can't handle it. Marshan finds Smith right in the high slot. Great stop, left pad. Zenitz, left pad stop at the opposite end after a rink length rush by the impressive rookie Seth Jones. This game opened up a little bit here in the last two <laughs> minutes. Both coaches grumpy. <laughs> yeah, we tease, you know. No, you do both, the interview between both, periods. Then. Both of these guys, both of, <laughs> both of these guys, Claude Julian and, and Barry Trotz, are among the most brilliant minds in hockey, and and they have great creative, offensive minds, but their games begin with defense, and that's what these two franchises have had in common for quite a while. David Poyle and Barry Trotz, of course at the top of the power structure for the Nashville Predators. Well, oh, mishandled pass by Boychuk, almost backfires. Hendricks creating energy for Nashville around the Boston goal. Boychuk takes a big hit from Hendricks. The puck comes up through the neutral zone. Paye into the attacking end. Here's Campbell. The wrist shot off a leg bounces right back for Paye. Tries to settle it. Correction, it's Caron. He guns it toward goal. Smith. 
Bob Gostad bounces one in on Spedberg, and he has to take the face off of the Boston end with 3-11 to go in the second. Catch this Saturday's all-new Big Bad Bruins Live, presented by DCU, Digital Federal Credit Union. They'll shine the Big Bad spotlight on Bruins defenseman Kevin Miller. Look back at some of the top moments in this week in Bruins history and reveal the DCU hero of the week. Check it out Saturday at noon. David Legwan doing some of the heavy lifting and taking on some of the uh, more difficult as you look at uh, some guys on the ninth floor. Wide open goal for Legwan, then he sends it right back through the goal. But Nashville unable to cash in. Three on two for the Bruins in transition. Aguila taking Lucic's pass. Muscles to the inside. It goes right through Mazanitz and into the back of the goal. And the faceoff will come back in the neutral zone. Aguila committed to drive the net. Well, after Leguan had uh, a lot of net to shoot at, and he put it over the crossbar, the Bruins try to get something going in transition. Lucic able to find a Ginla coming across the offensive blue line, just couldn't maintain his balance. That's a lot of net right there for Leguan. I don't think Svedberg got a piece of that. No. I think he just ripped it over the bar. Seven times a 15-goal score. David Leguan never has been a sniper type of player, but... Probably a little bit frustrated that he didn't cash in on that. As we were saying, Leguan taking some more defensive responsibilities of late, so Mike Fisher can open up and devote more energy to offense. This is his line with Colin Wilson making the pivot, but his pass goes off a Ginla's stick. Yossi's pass for Fisher, the high slot deflection, it trickles in, and Svedberg covers it. Fisher has six points in two games. Hornqvist, who was one of his wings, has three points in the last two games. And Wilson has five points in his last three games. So Fisher a little bit fresher and a lot more dangerous in the attacking end. Yeah, he's got to play against all the top talent. You know, he's the, the Bergeron of the Nashville team. And uh, if you can keep that guy fresh, he can be more productive because he's got good offensive skills. So if you're leg one or Colin Agostad, really get your line going to help him out. Marsh in to Hamilton, the drive just wide on the glove side of Mazanis. And as you were speaking, Fisher was challenging Spedberg, who made a nice extension. Colin Wilson to the front, Bergeron down, diving to block the shot. There's your compete factor. Riley Smith off the boards to Marshan. You now we talked about trying to activate the Bruins defense, and that was a great example of it. Dougie Hamilton jumping into the play. Wilson to Weber to Fisher with open ice. Fisher closes, save, rebound, scores! Victor Stahlberg! Weber feeding it forward to Fisher, and Stahlberg jams it into the open goal with less than two minutes to go in the second. Uh, heads up play by Nashville to take advantage of the Bruins making a change on the back end. It opened up lots of ice through the neutral zone. You can see the top part of your screen. The Bruins are going to try to complete the change if they can. But now the chase is on because Fisher stays up high. And Spooner gets locked in on that puck. He's going to pick up Stahlberg. That's his only responsibility in that situation. Don't get mesmerized by the puck. Take a look over your shoulder, see who's coming. And even though it's a, a rebound that you like to control better than that, Svedberg is concentrating on making the right pad save, but the rebound goes to Stahlberg. Uncovered. But that line change needs to be either quicker or not made at all. And that decision hurts Boston. And yet again, Jim, a late in a period goal against Boston. And a late in the second period goal. And number six, Shea Weber. Which is where it all second. fell apart against the Islanders. Krug taking the hit from Cullen. Now Spooner turns the goal, finds Stahlberg in his path, pulls up, goes cross ice. Krug controls the puck and then snaps it past Soderberg. Mazanix leaves it for Eckholm up the boards. Boychuk knocks it down, but it spills over his stick, taps it away from Bork. Markowski with Leguan on him. Leguan produces the turnover. And Smith for Leguan. It deflects wide. Smith with a second chance as Spedberg was caught in the traffic by the post. Final minute of the second period. And Nashville with a big surge of energy here at the tail end of the middle period. Markowski up the wall into Soderberg's legs. Smith turns around, drives it off a skate, and it spins into the fourth row of the stands over the low glass. 
we get a look at the goal again. It puts Nashville up 1 0 in this. Uh, really difficult to get your game in track against Nashville. And uh, heads up play, though, by Fisher to stay out. He took a look. Sorry, wasn't needed back in the defensive zone because the Bruins were making a line change. And when the defense can't get the get on the ice quick enough in order to wait, take, take away time and space, it leads to that shot on goal. But they should still be okay. Stahlberg needs to be picked up in that situation. Lucic with a Ginla going to the net. Lucic sets the edges, turns, brings it back. McQuaid one-times it, but Weber's there for the block. Krejci. McQuaid, 20 seconds to go in the period. Yossi gets buried by the That's an appearance. check. Now Ginlaw on the far side, McQuaid down there. You gotta keep your discipline right now. You got a power play because that's interference by Nystrom with McQuaid trying to get to the puck on the pinch. Nystrom arguing, but probably not gonna win this debate. It's a nice job by Lucci to carry that puck deep into the offensive zone initially. Top part of your screen, you can see McQuaid trying to get down the wall, trying to get around Nystrom. Nystrom's going to use the boards to seal him off, but there's just too much body contact away from the puck. That's your interference call. Final seconds of the second period. Smith to Spooner. Soderberg tries to jam it middle. It pops up. Hamilton high slot. Gostad with the block. He's in pain. And the siren sounds. Gostad crawling down the slot. Paul Gostad, a valuable penalty killer. You probably remember his days with the Buffalo Sabres and his teammates helping him to his feet. Good role player, good sized kid. He's uh, good in the face off circle. He's a good penalty killer. You're usually a pretty good team if he's your fourth line center. He makes that shot block. I expect to see him to be back in the third period, knowing the kind of warrior that he is. We've seen it a number of times in his days with Buffalo. But more importantly, the Bruins down 1 0. The ability of Nashville to take advantage of a mistake by Boston, the difference in this, there were some real good opportunities for the Bruins in that second period, but they're playing catch up. Hard hits of the game brought to you by Timberland Pro. We promise we won't sing this time. But when Nashville and Boston get together, there's a lot of this stuff. And there's that good nasty that Brick was talking about between Marshan and Hornquist. Emma Quaid and Hornquist. And there's more to come in the third period as the Bruins trail on home ice 1-0 alongside Andy Brickley with Jamie Erdahl at ice level and our Nesson production crew. I'm Jack Edwards. Glad you could settle in with us for this third period on a snowy New England night. What better way to spend it than watching this game with us? Moments ago, Brick spoke with Bruins assistant coach Doug Huda. Doug, coming into tonight, two areas that the coaching staff talked about that you wanted to be better at was puck management and compete level. I guess let's start with the compete. Satisfied to this point? Uh, maybe a little bit in the first, but I think in the second we got away from it, uh, especially the last 10 minutes, I think. we got we got to get back after them. We're not doing a very good job on our forecheck turning pucks over, so we we got to get some pucks in there and sustain some time. Uh, is it just the forecheck that's going to help you get your offense going, or is there other things that you can do? Well, obviously spend less time on ours, but we got to manage the puck very well. Neutral zone, you know, uh, make good crisp passes and get through the neutral zone clean so that we can enter with some speed. They're, they're a good team. They back check hard, but we got to keep the puck and we got to move it quickly. What was your analysis of the goal against? Well, my analysis was a bad change. Uh, they caught us on a change and uh, it shouldn't happen, and it did. It ended up in our net. Thanks. Good luck in the third period. Thanks. Well, get back after them. <laughs> That's a good idea for the Boston Bruins because... Uh, it, it remains a complete mystery as to why second periods give this team so much trouble. But, as Dale said in the transition between the game and the intermission, Boston's third periods are right there with the very best of them in the NHL. Yeah, and you heard Dougie Huda saying that, uh, you know, the structure for Nashville, the back pressure that they put on, it really limits what you can do offensively if you don't hit a defenseman coming late or you don't establish a four-checking game by making good decisions with the puck, especially coming out of your own zone and in the neutral zone. And that's the area of the Bruins need to improve in the deeper they get into this hockey game. Game summary is brought to you by your New England Ford dealers. 
Boston's third period goal differential is plus 18. Second only to the St. Louis Blues, plus 20. Nashville on the season, third period goal differential of minus eight. And that ranks 25th in the 30-team league. So history says that the Bruins should have the advantage here. But Nashville is on the uptick, having won two in a row coming into tonight after a five-game losing streak, which included a setback to the Bruins. Nashville's gotten solid goaltending tonight from Mark Mazanitz between the pipes for Barry Trotz as it tries to bridge this yawning gap between the surgery to Pecorine and the time that Rene can return. Well, the Bruins hoping to challenge the goaltending right now, starting this period with a man advantage. And Paul Gostad, as you said, <laughs> is out there. Roman Yossi tees it up, scales it out, but David Krejci catches it on his stick at the center circle. Now Tori Crew. To the right side to Krejci, he picks it up out of his skates, throws it off the end board. Shea Weber knocks it loose, and Gostad bounces it. It takes some wild caroms all the way down to Svedberg. Krug turns his net with speed. He's got some open ice, and Lucic on the left. Again, law on the right, and Krejci crossing the line. Krug's shot deflects off the end boards, and caroms all the way back toward the point. Lucic there to cover it. Lucic holds the puck in the zone once again, closes, tosses the backhand between Kinla and the goal. And that one gets cleared out. Fisher getting the backhand out of the zone. A number of the plays, a uh, phrase you can use, just kind of dying on the vine. That was a nice play by Lucic. He sorted things out. He won the puck battle. He exploded in the offensive zone, but he doesn't connect tape to tape when it needs to be made. Smith, the serpentine route through the neutral zone and into the attacking end, but the Bruins again don't connect on a pass. Spooner wins the puck on the boards, but here's Hendricks taking the feed out from Klein, gets to the red line and bounces a challenging shot in on Spedberg. The puck coming in end over end. No way to predict how it's going to tumble. Here's Smith. Weber stands up and pokes it loose, but Bergeron has the puck. Slides it to Smith, looking middle. Weber blocks that. Bergeron comes through and disrupts. Weber rips it off the boards, and it goes 200 feet. And the play's dying on the vine. Just when the Bruins try to create triangles, two-on-ones, it looks like they're going to get a quality scoring chance. Doesn't materialize. Zero shots on the power play for the Bruins. Four total. Spooner driving toward goal. Eckholm grabs him and knocks him down. Carone's shot off Campbell's sweet feed. And Mazanitz makes another save. Campbell. Spooner out of the corner. Hamilton's one-timer blocked down in front. Caron trying to get a tip, but Cullen was right on him. Strong move by Caron, meaning just getting that body position to get away. A pretty good snapshot from that high slot area. But again, Gregory Campbell's energy having an effect on the flow of play. And turning things Boston's way for a few moments. Barkowski to Caron. It pops over Campbell. He decks Spalling. And now Boychuk flattens Smith. Greg Smith going for a tumble at the Boston line. Ryan Ellis off the boards. The puck caroms back. And Mazanitz stops it as both teams change out. Ryan Ellis stops then, starts, tries to lose Krejci in the neutral zone, but Aginla forces him into Krejci. Hamilton taps to Chara up the middle of the zone. Here's David Krejci with Lucic lumbering up the left side. Krejci drops for Aginla. Fisher in perfect position. He is one of the best defensive forwards in the National Hockey League. And his wife can sing, too. Hornquist bats the puck through the neutral zone. Colin Wilson in a race for the puck. Turning out of the corner, getting around the check from Dougie Hamilton, who seemed to get a leg on him. McKinlan. Great. Weber knocks it away at the line. Wilson back after him. Wilson right into the stick check. O'Reilly Smith, it's a three on two. Bergeron's shot. Now Smith just wide of the post. Mazan, it's got a little piece of it. Bergeron to Marshan the shot with Smith on the doorstep. Now Smith in the corner tapping 
looking for Bergeron, but Yossi whacks the backhand all the way down the boards. McQuaid and Hendricks hard to the corner. They both go down. Krug turning it away from Gostad. Goes tape to tape to Smith. Draws it around and gets the puck to Bergeron. Bergeron's shot off. Ekholm stick bounces back toward the front. Ekholm goes skidding into the end boards after getting tied up with Bergeron. Marshan dangles. Saved by Mazanitz. Or maybe it never got through. Perhaps Seth Jones makes the block. Spedberg spins the puck for Bergeron. It's off the stick of Cullen. Ellis goes D to D to Kevin Klein. Against the grain for Stahlberg. Let's go Bruins. The chance for the TD Garden crowd. Sporter with a magnificent move around. Stahlberg flies into the neutral zone with Soderberg driving the goal. Boy, Chuck scores! And Johnny Rocket! It's his first goal in 19 games. Well, go back to that second period when Dougie Hamilton jumped into the play. We talked about activating the D. Johnny Boychuk slows down in the neutral zone. That's the key. It's about timing. You don't want to be too far up the ice where that passing lane doesn't exist. He times it beautifully because of the net drive. Position to take this little back diagonal. Soderberg on the net drive, Fraser on the net drive that allows Boychuk to come late. Takes the feed from Spooner right in stride, and that's a bullet. Boychuk with tremendous upper body strength and just snapped that thing. He could see the stick deflecting under the pressure of it. Yeah, there was no telegraph either. Zanis had no idea where Boychuk wants to go with this shot. You can see the reaction. He's got his glove up in the air. He's, he's trying to work the blocker up because he has no idea. There was no telegraph whatsoever. Boychuk looked like a 50 gold man walking right down the slot. Ellis bounces it the length of the rink, and the faceoff will come back to Mazanitz's end. A great shift by the Spooner line right after Marshan had a really good chance when he was able to walk right in that slot area, and uh, his shot was kind of bothered by Stahlberg and Jones. He didn't really get that clean look that he was looking for as far as his release. And you know, I'll take it all the way back to the, the Campbell shift before sure, that. Absolutely. It's Campbell out there again. Gregory Campbell, you know, so seldom gets in the scorebook, but he does so many things to help his team. Hamilton, high slot, wrists it on goal. And it's the same. Chara going all the way in looking for a rebound. Hamilton, under pressure from Craig Smith. Tom with the puck, goes off the end boards. Chara up to the defensive line for Caron. Campbell's right there in support as the pass deflected. Here comes Caron to Paye to Hamilton. The drive bounces across the front. Campbell just wide of the post. Paye to Chara. Wrists it low. Ellis steps in front of Caron, gets the puck forward to Hornquist. Now Mike Fisher at the red line, and Chara swats it away. Hamilton angles off Fisher. Chara turns away from the hit from Hornquist. Out of the corner, Wilson, it bounces off a body. Chara gets the body on Wilson. Aguila takes it from Krejci. Now Lucic back to Krejci to Aguila and open ice. Can't pull it under the bar. Totally different Bruins team than the second period. Lucic back pressure. Krejci drops for Aguila. Aguila for Barkowski. And a save by Mazanitz. Wilson just lobs it out to take the pressure off the Bruins. Storm back in to the Nashville end. Boy, Chuck down to the corner. Around through. Hendricks. Barkowski caves him in. Hendricks takes the number. Weber off the glass. Not out. Boy, Chuck's blast into Gostad's legs. And ricochets back to him. It broke Gostad's stick. That Boy, Chuck shot. Hendricks off glass. Boy, Chuck gloves it down the boards. Weber grabs it on the backhand. Forward for Leguan. Leguan to Roman Yossi. Let's go Bruins. The chant from the crowd. Loud as ever. Yossi into the middle. It's off Marshan past Hendricks. 
Krug. Hendricks strong in the stick, but Krug muscles it to Bergeron, to Smith, to Marshan. Curls back away from the flow, finds Bergeron who bunts it to Yossi's corner. Yossi snaps it up the wall. McQuaid right on Mazanitz. Yossi controls the Bruins, dominating territorially, physically winning puck battles. There's another one. Smith trying to feed Marshan in the middle. Leg one. The backhand ahead of Craig Smith. Bergeron there to break it up. McQuaid battling Smith and Bergeron there in support. Riley Smith hoists it out to center. That's a hand pass out of the Nashville zone. Well, there's your compete factor. The Bruins have upped it a couple of notches, and Johnny Boychuk with a blast has tied the game. Boychuk with a tying goal, and it starts back in the Bruins' defensive zone. Stahlberg for Nashville. He's a third man high. He can't get beat right here. If he does, when Spooner steps around him, now the Bruins have numbers. Potential three on two or a four on three in this case. you got to have the net drive. Soderberg's providing it. Fraser on this side, he's thinking, I'm going to go off this far post. That allows Johnny Boychuk with timing to delay ever so slightly to create the passing lane on the four on three. And a beautiful wrist shot finish, but it started with Spooner beating Stahlberg. You have to pe beat people one on one when it's man on man coverage, even in the offensive zone. Stahlberg, the third man, gets beat. That leaves a chance for the Bruins to tie the hockey game. Hamilton wins a puck battle against Colin Wilson and then flips it out through the neutral zone. It is getting really cold outside, but the Bruins are just heating up tonight. This puck deflects up and out of play. Barry Trotz was picking up on a theme that uh, you've established several times today. He was saying that toughness is not just dropping the gloves and fighting. Toughness is bringing it at a high level consistently. And that's one of the things he's trying to teach his team. And he points at a lot of members of the Bruins as guys who are able to bring their games to high levels an awful lot. Yeah, I can't tell you the hockey conversations that uh, we had in locker rooms back in the day saying, man, I hate playing against this guy. He just keeps coming. Yeah. He just keeps coming. You know, and he's not a guy that drops a glove and it's tough. He, he's just in your face. Every time you think you got a beat, all of a sudden he's on your back on the back check. And, and, and any time that uh, you're trying to defend, he's got a net drive going. I mean, that is all exactly of toughness and then again there's always guys that have the puck and we talk about David Krejci yep. when well, you have the puck as much as a David Krejci has boy you've got to be tough because you, you take a lot of hits Patrice Bergeron centering Riley Smith and Brad Marchand Smith to Marchand with speed toward the goal Seth Jones is getting a piece of it. Bergeron spinning at middle. Nick Spalling gets it forward for Leguan. Leguan to Craig Smith. He cranks one off. Svenberg to save the juicy rebound. And the bodies go tumbling. A commitment from the Bruins that has been lacking in the last two games. But it is there here in the third period. Bergeron swatting it away from Leguan who gets the puck back. Eckholm's pass. Caroms right to Smith in front. Eckholm in an emergency saves his own bacon. Soderberg getting green lighted up the wall by Gabriel Bork. Cullen. Boychuk locks him down. Here comes Spooner on the off wing. Hits the brakes and the rush goes away. Fires it middle. Comes back to Boychuk. Now Krug for Spooner. Top of the circle. The shot goes into the skates of Gabriel Bork. Eckholm off the glass and out. I always use Gabriel Bork's first name because every time I hear Bork, I think of Ray. And, you know. Not Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember it. I'll remember that next time we go to Pittsburgh. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, once again, Spooner's speed, uh, enabling him to make plays. Takes the puck wide through the neutral zone, attacks, gets that puck between the dot and the tops of the circle, then pull up, look for options, keep your feet moving. Make it difficult for teams to defend you by creating new passing lanes by using that footwork. Bruins have tilted the ice in the third period, but it's still a tie game. Adam McQuaid and Eric Nystrom barreling into the corner boards. And there's Hendricks, or rather Gostad. Now Hendricks on the far side. Chips the backhand. Nystrom can't control it. McQuaid wraps it up the wall. Gostad keeps it in the attacking zone past Campbell. Campbell goes in to help out, stabs the puck loose. That's Ellis trickling the puck down toward the corner. 
McCoy bangs hard against Kevin Klein. Campbell right there in support, and that helps the Bruins take the puck away, but they barely get it out over the line. Ellis throws it in deep. Nashville's going to turn it into a line change. Bruins try to catch him in it. Ellis, the only man this side of the ice, as Caron brings it forward, looks net drive for Paye. Paye taking a flyer at it, but the puck just out of his reach. Now Ryan Ellis. End over end, into the corner. Mike Fisher sets up, drops against Hamilton. Bergeron right there to nudge the puck over to Chara. Now Marchand to Bergeron, spreading the ice. Riley Smith can't reach the pass. Hamilton gloves it down. He's caught on the wrong side of it now, but Colin Wilson can't move the puck quickly up ice. Bergeron is back. So is uh, Hamilton, and so is Smith. Chara up the wall into Marchand skates. Bergeron feels the pressure of Fisher coming, gives it to Marchand. Marchand looks for Chara. He closes, dangles, goes around the goal, looks for the wraparound, and Wilson blocks it. Boychuk pinches down against Leguan. Marshan tries it behind the back move, leaves the puck behind. Wilson tries it off the boards up to center. Boychuk can't control. Hornquist into the middle for Leguan! And a save by Spagberg. Still loose at the post. Spagberg mighty strong to keep the skate against the post. And Shara just rubbing Hornquist down back of the goal. Riding that pony. The Bruins clear it up and out. This game has gotten good and nasty. Now, Char involved in both ends. Had an offensive opportunity when he circled the net, tried to wrap around on the back end. It was a good play in the neutral zone by Bergeron. And then his line mates were able to set up Char sneaking in from that uh, off-point position. And then he got a real physical with Hornquist back in his own zone. Krejci sweeps the puck across for Lucic. Krug inside the line, so again, has to delay, and Stahlberg picks his pocket. Shea Weber. Ahead to Cullen. Krejci takes it away. Lucci over the line with Aginla driving down in front. The tip scores! Jerome Aginla from Milan Lucci. And the Bruins lead. Well, that is a veteran schooling. A young defenseman on how to get to the net. The sun a little fake to the outside off that far post. And then Aginla jumps inside Yossi. And he's got the strong stick for a perfect target for Milan Lucic. Started by David Krejci with the steal on Cullen. The strength of Lucic, and then the outside, inside jump around move by Aginla. Wow. That's impressive. Lucic with his head up, zips a good hard pass, tape to tape. But Aginla's move, that outside, almost intimidating the young defenseman that I'm just flat out gonna beat you to the net. You can try what you want to try to deny me but it ain't gonna happen closing in on 550 goals in his NHL career still playing with the desire of a 17 year old willing to go head first into who knows what for the chance to score a goal well, Jerome tur McGinley. turning defense into offense Jack can happen in any zone this time it happens in the neutral zone. David Krejci with the structure, the simple little turnover against Cullen, the support from Lucic. Get your feet moving, take it wide, and allow Ginla enough time to make his outside-inside move to get open. Marshan along the boards. Smith looking for Marshan in direct. Hornquist taps back to Eckholm. Bergeron trips over Eckholm's stick as he was going for the hit, and Eckholm made a nifty move to get out of the way of contact. Marchand slides it to Riley Smith, banks it back to Bergeron. Bergeron's shot off the apron. Smith tries to pick it up. Wilson chips up the boards for Fisher. He's got Hendricks out ahead of him. Now Chara and Hendricks go to the end boards. Hendricks bangs Chara. Hamilton to Smith. Cross corner softly so Soderbergh can skate onto it. Kleins there first. Ryan Ellis, Eric Nystrom. Back to Kevin Klein. Off Gostad's stick. Boychuk taps it off the end boards. Barkowski gives up possession. Klein whips it back in deep. Decision making by Barkowski there, Brick. 
Yeah, he's got to take a look. Uh, Soderberg on the back check was on the opposite side of the ice, and Spooner was holding his ground as the centerman in the middle of the defensive zone. Barkowski has to take a look before he just throws it up the wall. Spooner stops on the puck as the rush dies in the neutral zone. That delays Nashville's entry. Barkowski taps away from leg one. Boychuk smart to lift the stick of Craig Smith, who was coming in from the backside. Boychuk. Out to the neutral zone, and the Bruins turn it over again. Spalling right side for Smith to try to save by Spedberg, and he covers the rebound. 5.44 to go. The Bruins lead for the first time tonight because of that man, Jerome Aginla, and that man, Milan Lucic. Snowy outside, but heating up inside. We're back to break it all down for you on East. They've had a real good third period. We'll also talk in the uh, post game about the Winnipeg Jets coming in on Saturday. Ace ticket Bruins overtime live after the game. It's winning time so Patrice Bergeron's on the ice and Barry Trotz has sent out Mike Fisher, Patrick Hornquist, Colin Wilson, his three hottest offensive players. Dougie Hamilton. First game back after missing 10. Roman Yossi, who would like to atone. Marshand whacks at Yossi's stick, centering pass. Horn Kvist, Fisher, saved by Spedberg. Weber drives it right through. Shea Weber has tied it. The captain of the Nashville Predators has an absolute bomb of a shot. Through the traffic, it finds its way into the net. It's 2-2. And Yossi was involved, Jack. He got the play going through the neutral zone. Gained entry, a little chip down the wall, trying to get that four-checking game established. It starts with that little move. We talked about Dougie Hamilton, maybe a, bit, a little bit of rust in his game. Didn't connect with Bergeron. And now the Bruins, even though they have numbers back, they don't win the board battle. And all of a sudden, that puck makes, it way, makes its way back to Shea Weber. Bruins had a good shot block on the initial chance. The puck ends up on Weber's stick, and that's a bomb. We have seen some high-speed artillery in the third period. Johnny Boychuk with one. And now Weber answering. Leg one with a big hit on Caron. Paye spins it down. And here comes Yossi one more time with Spalling. Spalling's wrist shot goes off. Boychuk skates. Craig Smith, far side, Spalling, taps the backhand off the Zamboni doors to leg one. Down low, Pae shoves Smith off balance. And number 27, Patrick Hornquist. Klein, wrists it through the corner. Barkowski picks up the puck, slides it to Boychuk, wiggles it off the glass, and here comes Caron with Pae to his left, and Campbell coming late. Leg one. Drops it off, the Bruins change out. The Krejci line. And Kinla on one side and Lucic on the other. Krejci grabs it in the neutral zone. Closes, dangles a Weber, tries to jam it near post. And Mazanitz makes the save. Shea Weber, a nominee for the Norris Trophy, but David Krejci nearly, nearly putting Boston right back on top. Amica coverage cam presented by Amica Insurance. Great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. Well, there's always a number of breakdowns when you give up goals, but this one's going to start right here. The passing lane to Bergeron is available to Dougie Hamilton when it doesn't connect. Yossi's going to end up with a puck, and all of a sudden, he's going to turn defense into offense. That's where it started. There were further breakdowns back in the defensive zone. Marshan gets back first. Hamilton's a little late in trying to get there in support. That allows Hornquist to pick up the puck and make a play to the front of the net. And even though Chara is able to knock down the Fisher shot, it goes right to Weber for the game-tying slap. Here comes Colin Wilson, the backhand, and the glove saves Fedberg. Wilson, a big body. Chara gets on him. Hornquist flings it right through the goal mouth. Weber pinches forward. The puck deflects off the sticks of Wilson and McQuaid right to Svedberg. Well, Nashville with a big surge of energy right here. And it's all deadlocked, 2-2 in the final four minutes. Of all the guys you'd want the puck to bounce to, that's probably not the one right there, Shea Weber. <laughs> he <laughs> can load it up. Yeah, if you're Nashville, absolutely. Yeah. If you're Boston, no.
Like one in Bergeron. Like one wins it back to Weber, but Marshan blocks it. Now it's a race. Oh, Weber just drills Marshan right into the dasher in front of the Nashville bench. Here's Bergeron back to Bartkowski. Marshan, of course, gets up. Bergeron off the end board. Smith. Pulls it out of the corner. A lot of different ways to show toughness in this game, right? Yeah, he got up when he got kneed in the head by somebody on Pittsburgh named Neil. <laughs> Smith gains the line, turns it to the middle. Eckholm whacks it loose. Bergeron gets his legs in the way and it bounces middle. Riley Smith trying to settle it. Bergeron does. Bergeron whips it off the stick of Smith and it goes to the end boards. Soderberg locking up with Eckholm to keep the play alive. And this is going to go for icing. Shea Weber not only can shoot hard, he can unload on you. Well, it was a funny face-off. Uh, you know, the linesman finally got the puck dropped, and Nashville wins the draw. And they run it right back to Shea Weber, who's going for the big shot. Marchand does his job. He gets in the shooting lane, makes the block. And now he's got a decision to make. Can I get this puck? Can I beat Weber wide because I don't have a ton of real estate? So you take the chance, and now the advantage goes Weber's way when he gets the angle. Ryan Spooner can't win the draw against Matt Cullen. Spooner trying to slow down Spalling. He finds Cullen up the boards. Cullen works against Hamilton. Cuts to the inside. Spedberg holds the post and takes the faceoff. Saturday afternoon at 12.30, join Dale, Billy, and Gord when W.B. Mason presents Bruins Faceoff Live. They'll preview the matchup with the Jets, examine how Winnipeg has adjusted to the Western Conference, and then they'll give you their locks of the week. Get all you need to know Saturday at 12.30. McQuaid whacks it around. Frazier scoops it up. Bergeron was on the ice just to take the face off in Spooner's spot. And now Spooner back on. This goes for icing. And Claude Julien will get to send out his choice. And it's going to be the David Krejci line with 2.31 to go. Picking up his team leading 27th assist. Feeding Lucic for that cross crease pass to Aguila, crashing the goal. Barkowski bats it up the wall. Krejci shielding nicely from Cullen, but Stahlberg's there. Lucic angles off. Stahlberg cannot connect with Krejci. Boychuk steps up for a big hit on Bork. Stahlberg with the large reach gets it to Bork down the slot, but Svedberg covers. Strong on the stick. Both of these teams take great pride in being that, and we saw so much of it in that sequence. Yeah, pretty good effort by both clubs. You can see Boychuk standing up. That leaves uh, Bartkowski in a one-on-one -on -one with Stahlberg. Defended pretty well. Stahlberg with a goal tonight because nobody picked him up on the back check after a poor change. But that was well defended by Bartkowski. Off the faceoff, Bergeron wins it to McQuaid. To Smith cuts back, finds Marshan working on Yossi. The snapshot off the crossbar, I believe. Or did it hit the knob of the stick and go up and out? Regardless, the faceoff will be in the attacking zone. I like how the Bruins quickly move this puck right off the faceoff to get it moving north. A quick release in stride by Marshan, either stick or blocker. Looks like it probably caught the knob or the uh, shaft of the stick up high. But a nice shot in stride, and I like the way he came all the way across the ice jack as a left winger in order to shorten that passing route on the feed from Smith. Charles blast! Oh, and hits Smith diving across the middle. Bartvist hard off the boards and it bounces down to the Boston line. Today, no Chara paired with Adam McQuaid on this change. Cross ice. Riley Smith can't get it around Eckholm on the first try. Gets caved in on the hit by Eckholm as he was spinning. 
This pass does not connect, but it's no icing as Hornquist is ahead of McQuaid. McQuaid wins the puck battle on the end boards with a minute and a half to go. Milan Lucic with the pivot to get around Colin Wilson, but Wilson wins the puck back to Fisher. Fisher gains the line. He closes the back end. Saved by Svedberg. Wilson, the quick pivot out of the corner, but he loses control because Krejci's in his grill. Now they come up ice. Krejci, Lucic, and Aginla. Aginla keeping the puck moving. Boychuk has a little bit of space. Loads it up. Indirect off the end boards. And well played by the goaltender, Mazenitz. Final minute of the third period. Boychuk, knowing a collision is coming from Wilson, gets it low to Lucic. Lucic working against Weber. Two immensely strong men along the wall there. Lucic trying to win the wrestling match. Aginla reaches out for the puck. Boychuk with a big hit slows down Yossi. Lucic looks for quick re-entry. The tight turn. Krejci the trailer can't control. As Spalling gets it ahead to Legwan, he slides it into the Boston end. Barkowski hard around, but not out of the zone. Seth Jones can't center it through Krejci. Marshan shoves the backhand up the boards. Leg one right on Spedberg. He dives on it to take the face off with 15 seconds to go in the game. Well, the Bruins look like they had something happening with the Krejci line. Originally, Lucic lost control of the puck. Puts it too far ahead of himself in the neutral zone. That led to that backhand chance for Fisher. But then that line again had pretty decent pressure, puck possession, but again, it's the battle. Both these clubs will be tired tonight, Jack, because the battle factor's been there. A lot of one-on-one -on -one battles. Nashville bringing it, Boston bringing it. That's why we stand 2-2. First round and Leguan. Leguan wins it back to the line. At home, in the corner. Smiling, tying up McQuaid, but he gets the puck to Bergeron and Riley Smith. Into the Nashville zone. They'll get a point apiece, and this one will go to overtime. Well, if you were looking for compete factor, it was there in the first, certainly there in the third. Bruins maybe got away from it a little bit in the second period, but uh, I think they got challenged by the coaching staff between the second and third, and they responded pretty well. Bruins have the best four-on-four -four goal differential in the NHL. Nashville is 23rd in four-on-four -four goal differential. OT in a minute. The Audi Performance Play brought to you by your local New England Audi dealers. Experience Audi Quattro all-wheel drive tonight. Well, you're going to wonder, or you probably started to wonder when Spedberg was going to get his opportunity to play, given the roster challenges boss in his face. Well, he got the nod tonight. He's done exactly what he's needed to do. He's given the Bruins an opportunity to take points out of this one. He's played with a lot of poise. He's tracked the puck well. There were some rebounds there, but you're going to get that from a young goaltender. The Bruins have done their best to protect that second and third opportunities for Nashville. But uh, I've been impressed, Jack, with his ability to handle the puck, read the play. That uh, pretty calm demeanor for a guy that's playing his first game of the National Hockey League. 24 years old. So... Nowhere near his prime as the goaltender, but he's got a lot of polish for a guy of that age. Flo Julian has shown a willingness to show that play to win thing in overtimes. And once again, he has brought out three forwards. David Krejci, Milan Lucic, Jerome McGinley, and the captain, Zidane Ochara. Roman Yossi and Shea Weber, the two defensemen for Barry Trotz's Nashville Preds. And David Legwan and Craig Smith, the forwards. Five minutes of four on four, sudden death. Krejci wins it back to Chara. Chara off the boards for Lucic. Lucic to Krejci in the weave. Krejci looking for a Ginla, kicks to the stick, throws the backhand into the corner. Yossi is on it. Off Krejci's stick, out to Craig Smith. Chara bats it out of the air. Krejci takes it. Shoves it through to Lucic. Lucic can't find it. Leguan does. Yossi recovers. Shea Weber flattens the puck. The Bruins change out. Here's leg one with some space. The shot goes off the stick of Hamilton up and out of play. Bruins making a change, and it wasn't the smoothest thing. No, we've ever the changes seen. haven't been that great tonight by Boston. Uh, 
you know, if you're a matchup team, and both these teams are looking for certain matchups all night long, obviously, but, you know, the, the attention to detail when it comes to line changes needs to be better, needs to be sharper, and here you are, winning time, it's overtime. Okay, you got a point in your pocket. Put another one in your pocket. Don't lose the game because of a, a late line change or some indecision. So again, three forwards and one defenseman. Dougie Hamilton out there with the Bergeron line. Bergeron carries over the spoke feed, finds Marchand and drives the net. Marchand dangles around Fisher, the shot scores! Brad Marchand! The Bruins win! 3-2! Dipsy do a dangle game winner! And not just the move, it's the kitty beat. It was Fisher on the back check, one of the best defensive players in the game. And Marshan gave that little outside step inside when he wasn't even really moving. That's impressive. And how about the finish? That is a bullet of a shot, Jack. He doesn't have a lot of momentum to get enough force behind it, so you're going to rely on forearms, wrists, and just the ability to shoot the puck. But the Bruins do a nice job off the faceoff. They manage the puck well. Good play by Dougie Hamilton. Bergeron thought about going to Smith. The play wasn't there. And just that little move, almost standing still by Marshan. And the net drive with Bergeron. Smith off that far post. Hamilton coming late, four on four. The Bruins continue to impress. Traffic in front, but the individual skills started by Hamilton in his own zone. Bergeron with a good decision in the neutral zone. And then Marshan with a finish. You know, when Weber laid him out, the best way he can respond is to do something on the scoreboard, whether it's set up a play or score himself. The response came a little late, but it came at the right time. <laughs> well, the Bruins put an end to their two-game losing skid. And Dale, there are a lot of ways to show toughness. That way, ended up in the back of the net, no T. And remember, they never ask how, they just ask how many. Coming up on Ace Ticket Bruins Overtime Live, we'll get reaction from a victorious Bruins dressing room. Head coach Claude Julian will go one-on-one -on -one with Jamie Erdahl and we'll preview the matinee Saturday afternoon here against the Winnipeg Jets. Ace Ticket Bruins Overtime Live is coming right up.